Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. And today I want to give you some terrific peony tips because our peony fields exploded. So we had like these 90 degree temperatures probably around uh, like about a week ago. And it just kind of kick-started the field. And then we got a ton of rain. So everything just like poof, exploded at once. So I want to show you some of the fun we're having with our peony plants. And I want to show you some of the easy ways to make arrangements for your own homes uh, with your own peonies or peonies that like you can buy at like Trader Joe's or uh, ShopRite or, you know, some of like your local shopping centers. So um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So, hey guys, how are you? Hey, Hugh. Um, oh, thank you. The peonies look beautiful. I'm glad you could see them. Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm coming to you from my kitchen today, which I haven't done yet. So I hope the audio is okay. I'm still trying to figure out this whole YouTube live thing. And uh, please let me know where you guys are viewing this video from, either if you're watching it live or if you're watching it uh, later on when I repost. So um, I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. So let's see. Uh, Stardo sounds great. Thanks, you. You're, you're always so helpful. So I'm going to give you uh, just a quick uh, few peony tips for like growing because I know a lot of you would like to grow these in your own gardens. And I made a ton of videos showing you how to plant them and how to care for them. But the most important thing I could tell you about growing peonies in your own gardens is to not plant them too deep. So the number one reason that I think people don't get their peony blooms from each year is because they're planted too deep. So um, the rule of thumb is just to plant them with about two inches of soil above like that tuber. It has like a crown and like a little tuber. So no more than two inches of soil uh, above that. And then don't go crazy with the mulch on top of that because that, you know, counts as planting it too deep. So you can sprinkle a little bit of mulch around the base of the plant, but don't build up that crown. Otherwise, you're not going to have these beautiful blooms and everybody wants beautiful blooms. So, um, all right, let's start. So the easiest way to arrange peonies is to basically just get a few of the flower heads. And these are ones that I clipped already. And I want to show you peonies a lot of times, these are like called doubles. A lot of times they'll have like side shoots. So here's a great flower farmer tip. If you want to have a larger flower head, like right smack in the middle, you can just snip off these little side shoots as the plant's growing. And then you'll get like a massive uh, middle flower. But if you want to have like more flower love, like you can get three blooms instead, then you just kind of leave it in place. And I usually do that because what I'll do in my garden a lot of times is once this middle bloom kind of peters out, I'll just snip it off. And then these two take over, uh, you know, and they add more beauty to the garden. So, oh, hey, guys, thanks for checking in. <laughs> Elsa said it's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. So um, this is what I'll do when I'm arranging flowers. I'll kind of trim off these side shoots because sometimes it's hard to arrange them in a vase because this guy is going to be so much lower than this top one. So a lot of times I'll just simply snip them off. I'll snip this guy off too. And then instead of throwing these little guys out, I'll just put them in a bud vase. And I have to say, I picked up these cute little bud vases at Michael's the other day. They were half price. I think I got them for like two bucks. And I bought three of them because I love things in groupings of three. And then they sit kind of right by like my window where I wash my dishes. And so these are just like all the discards from my arranging. And they're spectacular. And these blooms are going to like blow up like tremendous in like two or three days. So don't get rid of those side shoots because they're amazing. Here's the thing, though. Sometimes if the, if the side shoots are super, super tight and, um, you know, you can't kind of fiddle with the, the petals yet, they're, they're like marbles, they may not actually open up. And that's OK, because they look pretty anyway. I mean, look at this. Look at the colors on this. So even if it doesn't open up because it's too tight, the side shoots are still beautiful. They're still worth kind of salvaging. So here's this guy. And I have to say that I, I you know, usually reaching around here, I usually do things in groupings of three. So I'll have one, two, and then let me show you my third guy here. Reaching around my flowers here. I can't find my third guy. Anyway, uh, Flora's power tip is to use groupings that are like odd numbers. So I'll do like one, two, and the third one in front, and that makes for like a really pretty display. So right off the bat, you've got this, you know, really cute little design going just because of your side shoes that you cut off. 
And so back to our little simple arrangement. So now you've got the one stem. Once again, it's kind of cleaned. And guys, also remove the leaves from your peonies because if these leaves hit the water, they cause a lot of bacteria and that can clog up the stem. So that's true with most flowers. Always, you know, shear off all those uh, little leaves. But make sure that you leave at least two sets of leaves on the plant in your garden because um, the plant needs to continue the plant needs to continue to feed itself using photosynthesis. So if you were to cut this stem all the way at the bottom and removed all those leaves, then the plant doesn't have any chance to store food and energy uh, to winter itself over. So make sure you always leave some leaves in place, but then strip off the ones. I just strip them off usually right in the field because you don't want it to hit that base. So I'm going to just take it and I just simply spin it. I take it, I'll spin it. This guy's a little side shoot here, hold on. Put him in my little bud vase. And guys, a lot of times I'll even use like a coffee cup for my bud vase or like a drinking glass water or like a, an old yogurt cup. So anything will do. Peonies pretty much pretty up anything. So I'm just kind of spinning, taking, and I'm spinning with my hand, spinning. And let me just do one more. I'm gonna cut one through back here. So again, I'm going to strip those leaves off. Let's see where it needs a spot. And then that's it. I'll kind of futz because sometimes as I'm spinning, some of them sink down. And when I'm futzing with them, don't touch the peonies by the petals because they'll turn brown. They'll kind of oxidize and you don't want it to oxidize. So always play with your flowers from their stems. And even when you place them in a vase, always, you know, almost, almost like you're holding like a pencil or a pen. You just kind of place them in the vase like this. I used to uh, be really rough and, and, you know, shove them in like this. And I noticed that everything was turning brown. And I realized because I was like, you know, handling them too roughly. So give it a little spin. Uh, give it a little tightness here. And what you want to do is kind of make all the stems um, kind of even. Because what's going to happen is this long stem that I have here right now is going to make everything kind of wobbly in the vase. So it's going to wobble. It's not going to sit right. You want it to be kind of flush. So I'm going to wind up giving that guy a little snip. I'm gonna cut on an angle. You always wanna cut on an angle. So, oops, does that one come like flying right at you guys? <laughs> Incoming. Cut your stems on an angle so that you have maximum water absorption on the stem. And then I'm basically just gonna put a little rubber band around it. I mean, this is like so fun and so easy. Let me show you this side here. I'm kind of going to loop it around. Sometimes, guys, if you have really long stems, another florist power tip is as you're working with your rubber band and you can't get it all the way around all of them, you can just choose like one stem to kind of finish it off with and just do it from the bottom. And that will kind of sit there. Sometimes the stems are like really long. If you can just grasp one for the very ending, uh, that usually works. And now these guys are nice and secure. And I'm just going to pop them in a vase. And if you feel like they're too floppy, like right now, I think this guy looks pretty good, but I want to have like one more on top because I feel like if there's like there's room for it. If there's ever room for more peonies and I have them, I'll add them. So then since I already rubber banded this guy, I don't want to play with the peonies too much because they tend to fall apart when they're in this full blown open stage. So instead of like pulling it out, rewrapping it, futzing around with everybody, I'm just going to do this little trick. I'm going to cut a longer stem. Take this arrangement and I'm just going to pop it. Whoops, let me take this leaf off. I'm just going to pop it right in the middle. As long as that stem is reaching the water, then I'm good. And now it has that height that I like because I like almost like a little bit of a dome look. So now this guy's good to go. And I'm going to make sure that I leave him in a place where like he's not in front of direct sunlight. Like the spot I'm in now is not a good place for peonies to be all day long because there's windows all around me. And that sunlight comes in and it will fade your peonies super quick. So keep it away from like your stove tops, keep it away from direct sunlight from your windows. And you can even put these outside at night if it's cooler or in like your basement or in like a garage. And this way it will give you some added days of vase life. And guys, you can add like a floral preservative to the water uh, just to kind of feed it, to kill the bacteria. And if you don't have any handy, you can just use uh, a couple drops of vodka, which will act as your antibacterial. And you can add a little bit of sugar, like, you know, like a teaspoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of sugar, depending on how big the vase is. And that will feed the plant. 
And um, if you don't have vodka in the house, you can use a couple drops of bleach. So be careful with the bleach though, uh, because whenever I use bleach, I wind up getting spotted, but you know, so a couple drops of bleach will do the same thing that the vodka does. So that's uh, how to preserve it a little bit longer. And also if you have like an extra refrigerator or some room in your refrigerator, you can also put these in there overnight to add some extra days, but keep them away from fruits and vegetables because they give off a gas that flowers usually don't like. So this is like the most basic form. Let me show you some of the fun stuff now. Hold on, I got a whole table full of stuff. I'm like so excited to show you guys all this stuff. Hold on. Here is an arrangement that I use, and I just use my peonies, and I added lilac leaves. So lilacs, I realized, are okay to prune in spring. So once they bloom, you can kind of give them a pruning in like, you know, springtime because they start to set their flowers for next year uh, pretty soon. So I had to prune them anyway. And I realized that my lilac leaves have a terrific day's life. Like who knew? So um, I'm gonna wind up putting more of these in here later, but I also added some variegated wigalia. And if you guys don't grow variegated wigalia and you love making flower arrangements for your home, you may want to try it because it's a really beautiful, beautiful leaf. It has like kind of like two-tone. I'm gonna try to get rid of this guy and show you up close. It's kind of two-tone and it has a really nice vase life. So I'll just prune these from the garden and then just a quick tip about them. Is, woo, that would have been fun. <laughs> Actually, I dumped like five vases already during the setup and Sheldon was helping me and he dumped like four. So it's, it's like Noah's Ark and it was like water everywhere. So if you're using variegated wigalia, I'm getting in there more. You just want to like kind of clip off any kind of like new growth that's kind of floppy that comes from the center because that will make this stem kind of flop prematurely. So that's the way to go. And I just, you know, basically I built out the lilac branches. I maybe put like five or six of them in here. And then I put some variegated wigalia. And then I just kind of added these peonies just natural. Like there was like, I, I didn't agonize over it because it's a, a beautiful, natural, romantic look. So let me give you a little spin of this arrangement and see all the lot like I love these lilacs. This is my new favorite uh, green filler, lilac branches, my new favorite. But once again, don't use them as fillers in like September or August because you're gonna be cutting off next year's blooms. So um, just use them now in spring. Okay, so I'll give that guy like a little spin. And you'll notice guys, I have all different planting maturity stages. So I've got like the full blown open flowers that are in here. So I'm gonna enjoy this flower for the next few days. And then when this guy kind of peters out, I'm simply gonna come in here and I'm gonna just give it like a dead hunt. I'm gonna snip out that, that middle bloom once it starts to turn brown because peonies are notorious for petering out super quick. But I have a game plan because in back of that guy, I've got one in the marshmallow stage. So this means that this gal's nice and soft. This is the best stage to cut your peony at. Let me give you a little close up. It's kind of marshmallowy because this will give you like five to seven days of vase life. So I've got this gal in here. So this guy's gonna, you know, blow open. We're gonna deadhead him. This guy's gonna blow open, take over a spot. And then I've got ones that are even in a tighter stage uh, that are gonna blow open. And here's what I did, what I said before, when I told you that I cut off like that middle stem. So this guy petered out in the field. He had a big, massive, giant head. And I clipped it off because it was brown from the rain. And now I've got three more beautiful peony blooms that are ready to go. And guys, a lot of the peonies on this table are called Sarah Bernhardt. I love telling you that the types of flowers that I grow, in case you want to get them for your own garden. I love double peonies because the double ones are just tremendous and super fluffy. And then there's another type and that's called a bomb. Let me show you one of my bombs. Okay, and a bomb peony is this. I actually put one on my Instagram today. So if you wanna check that out, go to my Cranberry Fields Instagram channel. So it's a much better picture than this guy. Bombs have this huge explosion of flowers in the middle. And then they've got like a single layer, almost like a little dainty ballerina dress on the bottom. So I love bombs. I think some of the ones I love are called um, Raspberry Sunday and Sorbet. I'm not sure who this guy is but it's got that big explosion and then the little delicate ballerina dress around it. So um, peony doubles, bombs. 
Um, a lot of times people grow, when I grow them too here, it's like the single flower peonies. I think somebody, some people call them Japanese peonies and they're beautiful and delicate. And it just has like this huge burst of like, um, like a single pink, um, you know, flower and then a, a gorgeous like yellow in the middle. And those are beautiful, but the face light is, is even less on those. So, you know, I don't usually use those for cuttings, uh, but some people do. So that's just another, another uh, variety you can have. I also started growing what's called Ito peonies. And I have some of them here. Let's see if I can get in here. These are the Itos. And I'm kind of playing around with these guys as far as base life because Ito peonies will give you like between 20 and 100 blooms on a mature plant. So this is what the Itos look like. This one's called Bartzella. And DutchBulbs.com sent me a load of these a few years back and they're coming in beautifully. So this is a Bartella. Um, so far, so good with the base life. Once again, you have to cut them when this is like more of a full blown open one. And what I notice is that the flower colors start to fade a bit after a couple days in the vase, but it's okay because the flower is still like tremendous. And they come in like yellows and pinks and they're, they're kind of all the rage now. Like if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, your gardening center, you'll see Ito peonies like everywhere. And here's the story with them. Ito peonies are across between your herbaceous peonies, which are these guys, and tree peonies. So some people have tree peonies on their property, and um, I don't grow them yet, but I want to, so I don't know that much about them, but these are like a cross between the two. And so listen, if there's a chance that my peonies is gonna give me 100 blooms in one season, I am like all in. So I'm only on like year two or three growing them, and um, the first year they bloomed because, you know, they have like nice buds on them, you know, from when they came in. Second year, I got no blooms because, you know, they were just kind of getting established. And that's fine because they were working on their root system. And this is like year three. I think it's year three, maybe year four. And this year they exploded. So it was well worth the wait. And that's the story with most peonies. A lot of times you need to kind of wait for them to get established before you start seeing these beautiful blooms. And be careful when you're cutting them in your garden, because if you have a brand new plant that's just getting established and it's got like one, you know, beautiful bloom coming up, you know, you're tempted to go in there and cut it down and take all those leaves with it and bring it in your house. But once again, you might be starving your plant by taking that all that foliage away. So I kind of my brand new peony plants, I just kind of give them a deadhead once they start to fade and I leave them alone. I let them kind of get used to my garden and get used to my field uh, so that they can start, you know, like, like building out great root systems. All right. So let's get this guy in here. I'd like to thank um, Thondeman for supplying our today's cup of caffeine. So if you guys would ever like to buy me a cup of coffee, because you like some of the flower chips you're seeing, I have a little link in descriptions below. So Thondeman said, thank you so much uh, for your tips. Let me see uh, what they wrote here. I actually had it printed out. Oh, thanks, Kelly. And then I wrote back, thank you for your support and your and your kind comments. So anyway, thank you for that. And guys, please check out our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe uh, Facebook group because there's gardeners from all over the world and they're posting pictures of their flowers and they're posting uh, great answers and questions to their like garden questions. So all right, let me show you. I have so many more things to show you. So let me just take a breather because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Peony Palooza like overload right now. So let me see who I want to show you next. So this was the lilac branches. Oh, this is a great one. Hold on. Let me show you this guy. Everybody take a sip of coffee. Oh, that's good. This is a green basil plant that I got from ShopRite. It's basically like, I don't know, a couple bucks. And it's the kind that comes with like the roots on the bottom. So when you're in the produce section, you can kind of buy some fresh herbs or in like plastic bags sometimes. And they've got the roots on the bottom. I basically just put them in a cup with water. I don't even put dirt in it. This is what it looks like. So it's basically just water in the bottom of my cup without those roots. And I just popped a couple peony stems around it. And I also have this by my little, where I do my dishes. Where I do my dishes looks like a garden right now. And once again, I've got that grouping of three and it looks really pretty. It's just like a little, you know, like a little coffee cup, little perk of happiness there. So when you walk in my kitchen, uh, this is kind of like what you see in the background. And it literally took me like two minutes to make this little cute little arrangement. So I thought that was really kind of sweet. So, and oh, and guys, with your herbs, if you're going to do this, basically you can keep this herb going for like weeks and weeks and weeks, because what you're going to do is you're going to want to pinch off 
your basil plant, you're going to want to pinch off the new growth. So over here, you'll see like I've got this basil leaf. Right in the middle is a brand new set of leaves. It's brand new, brand spanking new. I'm going to pinch that off with my fingers. I'll use this for cooking or sometimes I'll even chew on it because it tastes so good. And then um, you're going to wind up getting brand new flowers, like more of them or brand new leaves, I should say, off this plant. So this has been going, I think I bought this about three weeks ago, and I just keep pinching off that, those centers, and then I just keep getting more and more leaves, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. So this is going to last me hopefully like all summer. So that's just a fun little uh, herb tip. And guys, I made you a video on how to plant an herb garden with like thyme and lavender and basil and parsley and oregano for like all your cooking, almost like a culinary um, kitchen garden. And I made a video on how to plant one in five minutes. And I basically just, you know, ran to ShopRite. I picked up like one of each of those plants and I show you how to actually just put it in a pot, water it in. And I, I kept it. It actually went from like September. I, I actually have some of the plants now. It lasted all winter long, even though it got really cold here. I kind of just covered the pot outside with some plastic. And when I pulled it back uh, in spring, like a lot of the plants were still thriving. So a really simple way to have a culinary garden like right in your fingertips for like so cheap so super cheap cheap is good okay now we had a load of peonies uh, in the field come crashing to the ground because of the rain did you guys get hit by a lot of rain we had so much rain here let me know what the weather's kind of like by you guys i want to see um uh who's checking in from where for a quick minute hey deborah henderson from oklahoma nice to see you hey aaron scott from paris wow oh i love that so so fun Oh, from Denver. Hey there. Is it near, near 17? Terrific. Oh, love it. Hey, Lorna. Okay. Um, oh, this is interesting. Deborah Henderson said, why don't you plant the, the peonies deeper? Is it the temperature or something else? Well, here's, I don't know the exact answer to that. Maybe you guys do, but here's what I think. If you live down south, uh, the rule of thumb is only to plant the peony with an inch of soil above it. And if you're like more northern, more northern, they say to do two inches of soil. And peonies do need to like go through like this kind of chilling period uh, in the winter so that, you know, they'll bloom the next spring. So I don't know, there's definitely a science to that question. Uh, there's a, definitely a better answer out there. So if you guys know the better answer, let us know. But I, I just know that that's the rule of thumb where if you plant it too deep, I would love to know the science behind it. So if somebody knows, let us know either on comments here or comments below later on or at our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there are so many cool conversations going on there. I mean, it's mind blowing. So I, I hop over there twice a week, but basically it's like, it's you guys, your platform. Like you guys hang out there as garden enthusiasts and you swap these great things. So if, if anybody knows the answer to that question, I, I would love to know. So thanks for that, Deborah. I love that. Um, do they like cool or hot weather? Okay, so super question. So Peonies love full sun. Like if you have a spot that has full sun, your peonies are going to do great. And they usually, I think they'll do great um, in most states unless it's super, super, super hot and you never get a cool down. Like I know my dad, lived, he lives in Florida and he, where he lives, like they, they do get like a cooling off period. But if you're down in like South Miami and like temperatures really never really cool off, I think it's kind of hard to grow peony plants there. So I don't know, is anybody down south that, that has good luck with their peonies? Let us know. Let us know if you have any tricks for that. But most of, uh, in most states, you can grow peonies unless it's super, super, super uh, hot. So let me know what you guys think. Um, any other questions I can answer right now? I know these flowers are huge. Aren't they crazy? I wish you guys could smell this right now. So it's like this smell fest all around my house, and which brings me to what I was going to tell you before. So a lot of these peonies came crashing down to the ground with the rain and you're like, no, but there's always a silver lining. So here's what we did this year. We went out and like, you know, we grabbed as many as we could and we kind of dried them out. Um, you know, we kind of like deadheaded a lot of them and we kind of just let them dry out on like some burlap. And then what we did was we put them in Ziploc bags. This was like our project uh, this last weekend. Sheldon and I were like so bored over the weekend. It was so rainy out. And so we took a whole bunch of peonies and we took the petals off. You know what? Let me get one that's a little more spent because I want to show you something cool with this guy in a couple minutes. This guy's kind of spent. Hold on here. 
Oh, that guy's just, look at me. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to cut any of them because I don't want to, I don't want to waste any, but this guy's kind of browning. So you'll take the ones that are kind of browning, you know, that they're not going to have any more base life and they kind of fall apart very easily. So we put them in a Ziploc bag, a whole bunch of the petals, and then we took a mallet. I don't have my mallet. And we basically just like, you know, gave it a good like bang, 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 bang on the counter. And what that did was it kind of loosened up all the peony oils that were inside here. And so once we were done like kind of crushing them, kind of loosening up the oil that was in here, we put them in a mason jar that I don't have because I just gave it to someone as a gift before they left my house like 10 minutes ago. But anyway, if you put them in like a mason jar, you know, you, you put all the petals in there once they're all cracked up. So, we, you know, put them in here. And then we took olive oil and we basically, let me just get rid of these guys so my visual works better. So we put the peony flowers in here. We dumped olive oil on top of it and we like stuffed this to the top. Oh, wait, I have one. Hold on. <laughs> wait, I have, I actually, we made two of them. Hold on. Give me one second because I have it right. Was I smart enough to bring it here? I was shocked right now. Here's what it looks like. So here are the peony petals. We put olive oil on top of it. And what we were supposed to do is leave it in uh, our, like on the, our, our windowsill and to let it kind of sit for a day. And then you kind of strain the olive oil and the leaves out. Hold on, I got the visual here too. You kind of, you know, dump the whole thing, or is it? You dump the whole thing in here and then you have oil at the end of it. And this is peony essence oil now. And you can make things like soaps with it and you can make things like candles. Or you can kind of use it just to like smell a room up, you know, maybe like putting some of those infusers. But um, we blew it. We made, I love telling you guys my blunders. We thought like, well, the longer we let it sit there, the better it's gonna smell. Well, not so much. We left it in the jar for like four days and we were like, oh, this is going to smell so great. So we, you know, we opened it up and we poured it through the strainer and this smell came out and it was so strong, but like when something's overripe strong, so it definitely did not smell great. So you have to make sure that when you're making like your peony essence oils, that you only let it sit there for a day. And then what you're supposed to do is now that I have that oil, after like, it was supposed to be like after a day, then you'll add some fresh peonies and you'll do the same process again. And then you'll strain it out after a day and then you'll add some more fresh peonies. And that's the way to get like a stronger uh, peony essence oil, not the way that Shell and I did it and let it sit there. Cause it, it just, it was like so ridiculously like pungent and overripe. So um, lesson learned, but I love when you guys learn from my blunders. So that's the story. So we're gonna be making some soaps and some candles and some fun stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of a fun way to kind of salvage uh, a rainy peony season. So let me give you some more fun ways to arrange your peonies. So check this out. This is a container that I bought from Michael's, I don't know, like five years ago. I got it for like half price. Like, you know, Michael's always has like the half price coupon or the 40% off coupon. I think I bought it for like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. And it's just this huge giant vase. And it took me about eight minutes to make this arrangement. I went out to the field. I just cut the heck out of all these flowers because I knew it was going to rain. And I basically just popped them in here. And once again, I think peony arrangements that are like romantic and drooping and, it, you know, it's natural. It's not like, you know, totally thought out and everything's perfect. I just think it looks better when it's natural. So this is the peony arrangement. I've got some stems that were cut lower. Oh, there goes like the seventh spill of the day. I'll show you a better picture of these guys. What do I need to move out of the way? I love when I look at like a YouTube live video because everything's in reverse. So as I go to move something this way, it actually goes the other way. Okay, so here we go. Move some of this stuff we talked about already out of the way here. All right, so here's the vase. Here's the flowers. And once again, they're just kind of all over the place. So the, the stems that are lower are in the front, like these are shorter stems. These are some super tall stems. And then I just kind of futzed about until I had like a shape that I liked. 
Uh, but another blunder that I don't want you to make is to make sure that your uh, vase or your vessel is watertight because this guy is not. And about, I don't know, five minutes before we went live, I noticed this giant puddle underneath my chair. So make sure that whatever vase you use can hold water. Uh, this guy, I think what I'm going to wind up doing is I do like this look. I think this is really cool. Let me know if you guys like this look, if you like this arrangement. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is put a like a like a garbage bag inside. And if I put a garbage bag inside of this vessel and just kind of secure it with a rubber band up top here and kind of hide that, you know, the plastic, I think it'll hold water and, and it will look terrific. So that's kind of the workaround because when I like something, I really want, I want it to work and I'll, I'll usually find a way to make it work. So don't let those little obstacles in your life stop you guys. There is usually a workaround if you're just stay calm and kind of just like figure it out. So that's the workaround for this guy. All right, so that's him. I got another great tip. Oh, you guys are going to love this one. Hold on. Put this back here. I have to say, Sheldon set this whole thing up before. Uh, I was going live, and I was writing, like, all the YouTube um, titles and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, what are you doing? You need some help. And he literally, like, blew, blew up this whole, like, set for me. So if you guys like what Sheldon did, let me know in comments below. Give him a thumbs up because he's, like, so helpful. And I have to say, I think he cut... Like at least, I don't know, 70% of the flowers on this table for me last night uh, when I was getting arrangements out for somebody else. And I was like, oh, it's going to rain and I'm going to lose all those flowers. And when I came back, he was in the field and he had them all like pre-cut. And so that, that's, a, that's a, like a, a good husband. So I appreciated that. So let me know if you like Sheldon's handiwork here. Um, let me show you what else. Here's another example of just those, you know, the rubber band going on. And this one is a cubed vase. So cubed vases are awesome. I love square shapes because you don't see them all the time with flowers. And once again, it's just that rubber band placed in here. And then, once again, Michael's, how bored we were with all this rain. Check this out. And this was on sale for half price too. So it's like a little post office box. Kind of opens up. And my idea, I haven't done this yet, I thought, I thought this would be a good idea. Let's see if it works or not. My idea was to put like some rubber band peonies inside. Oh, I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Oh, not bad. I was like, I should really try this out before I show the flower tried, but I think it worked. What do you guys think? So I thought I'd maybe hang that in back of uh, like, I don't know, when I do like a YouTube live video, maybe get some silks that look like this and kind of hang it on the wall and back of me. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think about some of these flower tips. I love your input. You guys always have like great suggestions. And um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. So uh, Rosie, oh, it's beautiful. Thumbs up from Carlos. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Kathy says she loves them all, especially the big one. I know, I have to, good job, Shelton. I'll let him know. <laughs> Crack up, will be like, really? Like you had to tell everyone that I got all those flowers. But <laughs> I think he secretly might like it. Okay, so that's these guys. And I want to show you wooden boxes. I love wooden boxes and peonies. They're just crazy. Wooden boxes. I think I got these maybe the dollar store, possibly Walmart. Once again, I think they were like two bucks. And this is going to look great with just, oh, this is another arrangement. Okay. Are you ready for this one? Michael's. I think this vase, this stone vase was three bucks last week because it was 50% off. And I bought ones that were small, medium, and large. So I have that grouping of three. They're probably still there if you want to grab some. There was a ton of them. This one was a little more expensive. This one might've been $12. One, two, and then there was a smaller one. So I have that that three thing, one, two, three going on. But I mean, come on, for like like three or four bucks, or maybe, maybe the tiny one was three, this one was six, and that one was 12 because they were half off. I bought a whole bunch of these. So anyway, back to this wooden box here. So I'm going to take these guys out. And I thought they looked really pretty in like just a wooden box. Right? I mean, how easy is that? Like I love peonies because you can't go wrong. Like there was, you cannot make an ugly peony arrangement. Like look at that. Oops, this one kind of fell apart. Oh, that goes for the soap drawer. I have like a whole soap, soap basket now. Okay, so that's like a wooden basket. So that's super fun. And once again, this wooden uh, basket had like a little plastic liner in it. And the ones that didn't have plastic liners in it, I took a Ziploc bag and I basically just stapled the sides of the box. Actually, this was one of the ones I might've made. 
Guys, another thing to do as your peonies start to fall apart is if like you're having, you know, like you're making dinner or you're having company over or just for your family, I always have like flowers or basil or herbs on my uh, serving platters. Like it's just like something that I always have because there's usually flowers here. So I will take some of these flowers that are totally falling apart like the one you just saw and I will put them on a serving platter. And it's something to be known for, which is kind of fun. Like, you know, sometimes you know, oh, oh this person's a flower person. You know, this person's the car person. It's kind of fun to be known for, like, the person that, like, as you're serving up some food, you always have some really fun flower heads. Now, when I, when I put these on um, food, like, food trays, I'll really give it, a, like, a dead head all the way up to the top because I don't like the way this looks. So right now it's got the stems. I dumped over another vase. <laughs> this is like an odd point thing. So like the stems are kind of yuck unless you have like food on top. So an easy fix to that is to just trim up the stem all the way. And now you have like a flat surface and you could just lay it on your tray like that. I'm trying to show you in reverse here. I'll hold it up in a minute. Hold on. So I'm just snipping off these flower heads. Oh, the tray and then right in the middle like you can put like your chicken or your fish or your steak or your veggies or whatever you want like right smack in the middle and um, if you're having company over I like doing this on wood boards too so let's see I've got a wooden board underneath five other things here hold on let me move this mailbox I know you can't see this but Lucy is literally like underneath my feet right now everybody say hi to Lucy and get rid of this cube so the same idea and my girlfriend Susan Mavoides who was like the Martha Stewart of cranberry does stuff like this she'll have like these giant wooden boards but you can put like little flowers on them boom done and now you've got your cheeses your wines we have like a little bit of honeycomb I'll put in there and it looks like you you tried like so hard to like make people feel welcome in your home because listen like you do, like why not? If people are coming to your house, it's really nice to make them feel special. And if you have like flowers and, uh, you know, like herbs on the plates, I just think it makes them feel loved. So it's like a really simple way to, um, you know, make your house beautiful, make people feel loved. And you're using those flowers that, you know, otherwise would have just kind of sat on the ground because of the rain. So there you go. Oh, okay. So Ninja, hey, or <laughs> Ninja. Hey, Angie, thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, Andrea loves those. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Carlos, I love the peonies. I need to plant some, yes. Okay, so anyway, so that's the peony in the kitchen look. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you before I got completely sidetracked. All right, hold on. This is one of my all time favorite peony tips. This is a florist, well, I think this is actually more of a, a flower farmer power tip. Um, we've got a couple of events uh, that you know people have pre-ordered flowers for and they're coming up next week and the week after, hey, Lori B, you know I'm talking about you. And so um, for some of my favorite customers, I'll like make sure that I've got like the, the best flowers for their events. So I had Lori B in mind with this one. I wanted her to have my peonies for her event, but the weather got hot, like I said, everything burst open. And I'm like, there is no way that they were gonna last in the field for another two weeks. So what I did was I went out and I dry cut peonies like last week, this week, I went out when, you know, the field was, was dry. It wasn't, you know, soaked with rain. And I cut peonies in this stage. And this is a stage where it's not quite marshmallow, but they're not those tight, tight balls. So, like, right now, there's a little bit of movement. You can tell, like, with the, I can kind of move these, you know, like one or two petals. I can move some of these little green, you know, outside petals. It's not that, like, this is a super tight ball stage. If it doesn't move, um, it, it won't work. But if you do it just before the marshmallow stage where there's a little bit of movement and you go out to your field and you cut them and you don't put them in water, you bring them back into your house or your garage, give it a little shake first because there's probably going to be some ants on them because the ants like to eat like the nectar that's on these tight bulbs. The ants will not hurt your peony. Leave them alone. They're actually very good. They're probably uh, eating some of the other bugs that are bad on them. So, um when you see your ants, you know, be, be good to them because they're good, but shake them off. And then you're going to put them, you know, let them cool off a little bit because sometimes they're in your garden or they're in the field and they need to kind of cool off. So, you know, let them cool off first, get all that kind of moisture off them, you know, get like room temp. And then you're going to just wrap them up in craft paper. 
So I have the stems wrapped. I've got everything just kind of wrapped up nice and tight. So that I kind of like folded it like a diaper. So I kind of like folded it this way and then I folded it this way and I did it loose. I didn't want to crush it. So I kind of have some, a little bit of airflow going here. And then I taped it and I put the date on because I literally have like tons of these. I put the date on it. It was like June 2nd. I don't know if you can see that there, June 2nd. And then I put them in a refrigerator. And what's going to happen is in like, you know, next week and then the following, I'm going to take these out. And I'm going to give the bottom a cut about an inch or two. And I'm just going to pop them in some water. And once I pop them in water, in about two or three days, it's going to open up like these guys. So that's called the dry cut method uh, in case you want to kind of, you know, save your peonies that are in your garden to bloom at a later time. And I did this for my daughter, Jill's graduation, because she loves peonies and she wanted them. And her graduation, like a couple years back, was like June 22nd. And I was like, there is no way that these peonies in May are going to last. And so I learned the dry cut method and I did it. And we had peonies all over the backyard. So uh, I think it made her happy. It made me happy. So that's just another great Peony tip. So, okay, let me get rid of this guy. I'm like looking around my table. I have like all these things lined up. Oh, this is great. Are you ready for this one? You're gonna love this one. This is so easy. Hold on. I'm waiting till I fall off my chair as so I keep reaching to get something. If I ever go to reach something and I don't come back up, just somebody call 911 and just say cranberry, flower form of cranberry, so man down. Okay, so when you have peony heads that you're futzing with, or they're kind of falling apart, or they, they just don't look, you know, that spectacular. I'll take some of those, like this guy's, you know, not at his prime for an arrangement, but he's still pretty, so I don't want to get rid of him. Um, I don't know that I want to put him in the soap bin yet, you know, that little um, bin we have for those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to float him, and I'm going to float another guy. Well, I'm going to float this guy first. I just have like a water vase. Right, so I'll put like two, I'm trying to see if you guys can see this. Let me move it back here. I need like stadium seating on my table so I can move things up and down. Hold on, here we go, that's better. Clear away this schmutz, hold on. Okay, so boom, one, two, three. So if you walk into someone's house and they have this like, you know, like on their dining room table or, or you put it next to like your bedroom at night. I mean, how zen is that? Is that so pretty? And they'll just kind of float around. They should last just a couple days and they change the water. The water might turn a little bit brown after a couple days. That's okay. Just change the water. And it's just like a really simple, beautiful look. Very um, just elegant and simple and gorgeous and peony-esque. Okay, so that's that guy. All right, I'm running out of table space here. When you're bringing peonies to people, I'm crazy about clothespins. I know that sounds so stupid, but it's I just love them. So clothespins on like a little piece of card stock with like a little love you, thinking of you. And then if you put it like on a little stem, let me see, this is like a good example here. Once again, guys, these are just some like thrown in a vase, kind of natural, but I'll put like the little clothespin with the love you, thinking of you card, and I'll just attach it right to one of the blooms. Oops. And that's it. And I just think it looks very pretty and very cute and just, I don't know, like, right, isn't that simple? Like, I love simple. I love, <laughs> what is the method they call it, kiss? Uh, keep it simple, stupid. So I love the KISS method of things because the more complex I get, the more things fall apart. So when I keep it simple, uh, it really works out. So that's that's the closed pin method. This I love. I think I got this in Michael's a while ago. Once again, a 50% off. It was a, a pink truck that actually had these like fake daisies in the back, but I didn't like the daisies. They look kind of like crappy. So I took the daisies out and I always put fresh flowers in the back right now. So uh, I just love this as a little something, something on like, I don't know, like my living room or the den or when you're watching TV, it's just kind of cute. And once again, I just took some of those blooms that were like crashing to the ground. I couldn't do too much with it. It was weighing down my plant. You have to think guys, when you're 
peony plant is supporting the weight of all that water that builds up in the middle, you know, of that bloom. It's a lot of stress on the plant. And as it's trying to support the flower and, um, you know, it needs to worry about that, it, it's not putting a lot of energy into like that root development and to getting like stronger leaves. So, you know, when, when your peony's kind of had it, do it a favor uh, and give it a deadhead, give it a snip. And when you're doing is you're also helping the seed you're also helping the plant not to have to create seed because if you leave those um, spent blooms on your plant, like, you know, all summer long, the plant needs to create a seed. That's just what it does. And it, it takes a lot of energy to create a seed. But if you kind of deadhead it when it's spent, you're stopping that whole process from going on and you're allowing uh, the peony plant to put more energy and more resources into those stronger roots and better flowers for next year and storing more energy. So do your peonies a favor, kind of give them a break and, and give them a deadhead or do some of these things with them. You know, when, when they're looking kind of like these stages, just kind of give them like a little clip and throw them in some containers. So let me think what else. Is that, I, wow, can that be it? Oh no, of course I got one more, wait, I gotta show you this. Oh, two more, sorry. Some people don't like the way that the peonies kind of flop over uh, when they're doing the vase and they don't want to rubber band it. So you can tape your vase, and I don't know if you guys can see this. I did like just a crisscross. So I, I took like two pieces of tape, I went across one piece, across two, then there was like a little gap in the middle. You can see my fingers kind of in there. And then I did a crisscross, I did a piece of tape this way. And what that does, is when you're building out your arrangements, and you can do this with like the bigger arrangements too, like you can do this with like, you know, the square arrangements or the round arrangements, then if the peonies, like the stems just kind of go inside each of these holes. And it kind of, let me cut this guy to show you that, hold on. Wait a minute. So you basically just put these like where these little holes are. And then the tape kind of holds the flower heads in place. And so it's just another way to kind of arrange flowers. And I'm gonna get rid of this leaf. There's like a little tiny hole here. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's transparent tape, but all these crisscrosses now made like little tiny holes to put these plants in. So hopefully you guys can see that. And that's just a quick florist power tip on how to like keep flowers in place sometimes. But I'm so lazy. I don't, I don't want to do that because it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. So I would, oops, sorry, no, no, it's, it's a bit of a pain. I think that you could just rubber band them. I think it's just simpler to me, but some people do like to use that taping crisscross method, especially on like those larger vases. So uh, totally your style, totally up to you. And this is, um, I showed you guys this last week. This is a yogurt uh, container, like that We yogurt. So like I said, the, the yogurt seems pretty expensive, but when you think that you're getting a peony vase out of it, it's called we, which means yes. I think last week I said we means hello. Sorry about that. Sorry, Paris. I know that I botched that one. But uh, yeah, so the yogurt's called we, and this is the container it comes in, and it's the perfect, perfect peony vase. So that's the story with that. And, oh, well, wait, of course there's more. I have these bird cages that I used to use for events. I love bird cages. I don't like to keep birds in the cages. I like bird cages to keep flowers in because I think birds should be outside. So what I'll do is I will take some of these peony blooms, once again, the crash to the ground, and I'll just line my bird cages with them. And once again, this is a look for when you have company because these are not gonna last in here for more than like a day or two because there's no water. But you can also put like those little hydrangea, like those little bud vases, um, if you're like a, if you've ever seen florists will sometimes put, um, it's like a little tube and you just kind of put the flower stem in there and that will make it last longer. But if you're just having company and you have a couple bird cages around your house, I don't know. I think that looks really pretty, right? Let me kind of hold this up here more. Looks like the flowers want to escape when the doors open. So that's that look. And actually you can even fill it to the top. So, and you can put some ivy dripping around it. My friend Kari had an event the other day and we were kind of, she had a great idea of putting like ivy around this. So that was a really good idea. And then the peonies in the middle. So all sorts of fun stuff you could do. So that's that. And I think that that's it guys. Wow, I can't believe we covered all that. Let me answer some of your questions. Now let me take some time to kind of take a peek over here at who's doing what. You guys have any questions, peony questions or garden questions that I hope I can answer. If not, uh, someone from the flower tribe might be able to. You guys uh, so often know so much more about flowers than I do. So, oh, of course, oh, that's, Lucy's gonna take the whole thing down now. Do you see her walking in the back? 
I know, I see that this is like such an accident waiting to happen. She's looking at me like, I need to walk through here, but you don't because you can go the other way. Wait, I have to move my table. Wait, hold on. Because Lucy's just so going to take this down. So guys, let me know any questions that you have. I'll try to get to them real quick. Can you try really hard not to not to these laps? Okay, Lucy, disaster averted. All right, let me see what's the what. Uh, oh, do I ship flowers? I do. So I have a, a bouquet company. It's called Cranberry Fields. So if you want to go on cranberryfields.com, we ship our flowers overnight. They're in these really cool burlap wrap bouquets and you can check them out. But we only ship them um, like limited days during the week because most of the time we're out like on a flower farm and we're doing a lot of these like garden videos for companies now too. But we do still have our bouquet business open and it's one, it's like my baby. That's how like the company kind of started. So um, check that out. I'll, there's a link in descriptions below. Uh, let me see who has those questions. I love peonies. Oh, I know. We should have a lot of peonies here. Oh, you know what I'm doing here? I just realized that um, peonies are super easy to propagate. So I've read. I haven't done it yet, but this is what I've seen online. I'm going to try to propagate my peonies this fall because apparently uh, if you wait until they go dormant, you can dig up the tubers. Now, for the most part, you don't have to. Like, I've never dug up my tubers. These guys have been in the field for like 10 years. So I just usually leave them alone. But apparently you can dig them up. Like if you get like a large enough root ball around the plant and you can kind of brush off most of the soil and each of these stems that we're kind of seeing this stem here, each of these stems comes from like the eye of the tuber. So you'll see like a stem coming up, a stem, a stem. So it's like an eye, an eye, an eye. If you can uh, dig up your peonies in the fall when they're dormant and you find like two to three eyes, like two to three spots where those stems came up. Then you can kind of with a spade or like a sharp knife, cut the tuber so that you've got like two or three sets of eyes on one half, two or three sets of eyes on the other. And then you automatically have two plants where you used to have one. And then you put it right back in the ground, kind of settle it in. And then hopefully you'll have two plants that come back in spring. So, huh. I mean, let's let's try it. I mean, I'm curious if it's going to work. I think it will. I think a lot of people do this. And I think you can also do, um, I don't know if you can or not, if you can do propagations from cuttings. Anybody know that answer? Anybody propagate their peonies from cuttings? I'm looking in comments. I'll give you guys a chance to catch up. So Janet Chen, you're in uh, zone B. You've planted two peonies and they still don't have any flowers yet. When will they start having flowers? When Janet, when did you plant them? Um, it usually takes like two or three years to start seeing like one or two blooms. And then you'll start getting like five blooms and then six blooms and then 10. I think I had one peony plant this year. It gave me 12 giant blooms, but I've got like eight plants, eight peony plants that I planted two years ago. And each of them gave me one bloom this year. And that's normal. So you got to be patient. But listen, they say peonies are the hundred year plant. So peonies have been known to stay in people's gardens and, and flourish for a hundred years without fussing with them. And I've, I've seen it written that they are the plant that thrives on neglect. I mean, is that great? So it's the plant that thrives on neglect. If you kind of just leave these guys alone, leave them in a sunny spot, make sure they have enough water and that you don't overwater them. Um, so you can use the knuckle test. So you basically put your finger in soil by the base of the plant up to your second knuckle. And if it's dry, then you're going to give it a good watering. And if it's moist, uh, you're going to leave it alone because you can get root rot if you keep your peonies too wet, like too flooded. So that's kind of call it like the knuckle test. So make sure that might be another reason why you're not getting flowers. Or, Jenny, you might have um, too much nitrogen in the soil. So if there's too much nitrogen in the soil, same thing happens with hydrangeas. And I think this is a problem with a lot of hydrangeas and peonies is people like over fertilize and then you have so much high nitrogen that it gives you gorgeous, gorgeous green leaves, which is what it's supposed to do, but then it kind of inhibits that bloom growth. So, and be careful when you're fertilizing your uh, lawns because lawn fertilizer has a super, super high nitrogen concentration, which is why it makes your lawn so green. But a lot of times that fertilizer will then wash off into like your garden beds and it will give you these gorgeous peony green leaves and, and hydrangea green leaves. And then you don't get any blooms. And you're like, huh. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that could be the reason. We would take a grab, grab a coffee. Um, oh, Carlos, great question. What do you do to hold them up in the garden? Uh, there's something called peony cages. 
And um, basically you just, it's kind of like, like two or three stakes that go on the ground and it's got like hoops around, like a wire hoop and a wire hoop. And uh, the best idea is to put those stakes in place when the plant is young. But you can also do what I do because uh, I have a couple in the garden that I do put these around and I always forget to put them in early in the season. It, there's some that just detach and you can put them around a mature plant. So like the hoops kind of detach and then you kind of hook them together. You can do that around a mature plant. And I have um, all those listed in my Amazon shop page. So guys, most of the stuff, um, I don't have the Michael stuff listed, um, but I've got the stuff that you can buy on Amazon very easily. I've got like a shop page for plants, a shop page for Gijimagoos, like that, you know, peony plant page. And so I have a whole florist idealist of stuff you can buy, like for the, some of the floral stuff that I play with here. So check that out. It's in the descriptions below. It's at the end of all my videos. And it's just an easy way to kind of pick up some of the goodies that uh, we're kind of chatting about. But that was a great question, Carlos. So, yeah, so a peony cage is the way to support them. I don't support my flowers that are in the field because there's just hundreds of them and it would be impossible. But the ones in the garden I do, and they work great. And there's a whole bunch of different varieties. And um, if you don't want to shop Amazon, go to your local garden centers because they usually have them. Whole um, Home Depot, Lowe's has them. You know, you, the local small guys have them. So, you know, shop local. <laughs> Let's see what else. Oh, uh, Niha. So you love peonies, but they don't grow so well here in India. That's because you have like really, really beautiful, hot, balmy weather. So <laughs> listen, that's that's the flip side of not having to, to live through a New Jersey winter. So I know the good with the bad. Let's see. Um, actually, can we cut the stems and put them in water? Uh, it will root in a few days. Oh, interesting. Okay. So Rosie seven, Rosie seven. Dexter 7 said, actually, you can cut the stems and put it in water and it will root in a few days. It works for dahlias, so I think it will work for peonies. Interesting. Huh. I guess we'll have to try that out. I don't know that I've ever noticed roots coming off my peony stems, but I don't know. Let's try it. Like, I'll try, I'll try anything flower-wise. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, garden hands. I hope to have a room filled just like yours in a couple of years. Well, I wish you loads of peony blooms just like these in a few years. I, I hope you have them. I'm sure you will. And post them on our Kelly Lena's Flower Tribe Facebook group. I want to see pictures of your peonies. Um, let's see who else is there. So garden hands says, curious how many plants you have and how many different varieties. That's a great question. Um, I don't know the exact number. I'll tell you what I grow the most of because these are the ones that are like super easy to grow. I have like almost like the Darwin Darwinism farm, unless it's super easy to grow and like, it doesn't take that much care. I won't grow it. I just, I, I, I'm just, I don't have time. I feel like, and I don't have uh, the stamina. So peonies, I grow a ton of peonies. I grow a ton of hydrangea and actually proven winners is sending me over like all these great varieties that I haven't grown yet. So they're coming like next week. I'm going to show you how to put like six or seven new varieties of hydrangea in the ground that they looked tremendous and like wonderful. They had great reviews. Uh, but one of my favorite hydrangeas is Endless Summer. I have a load of videos about Endless Summer and Care. And there's one video that has like over a million views. So check that out. Um, I probably will link it uh, in the descriptions below. It's called How to Get More it's Garden Planning how to get more blooms from your hydrangea. And it really helps people like get tons of hydrangea blooms. So hydrangeas are no brainers for me. Limelight hydrangea, I love. You will get like, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blooms from this, uh, from this plant without doing anything more than just kind of like popping it in the ground and making sure it gets established. So limelight hydrangea, Ella summer hydrangea, Annabelle hydrangea, I love. Um, Proven Winners is sending me incredible hydrangea, which is like the new version of the Annabelle with stronger, sturdier stems. So we're going to test run those guys out. Uh, sunflowers, I love. Um, they're annuals, but they're super easy to grow. So we put in like 10,000 sunflower seeds every year. And thank you, sunflowerselections.com. Uh, Tom, the owner, sends me like an entire field. Of, of sunflower seeds each year. And I'm so grateful to him and I love his company. So sunflowers, super, super easy to grow. And uh, zinnias, super easy to grow and they're repeat bloomers. So once you put those seeds in the ground, you have to plant them every year, they're annuals. But if you like deadhead them, they will give you blooms from like July or like the end of June all the way through like the first frost. And the same thing with celosia. So celosia is another huge flower that we grow here. So those are all 
um, you know, like great flowers to grow in your own garden that are super easy and I think will bring you like a lot of joy. And so um, I guess that's it, guys. Okay, well, listen, I appreciate you guys showing up here and I hope to see you next Thursday at 1030. If not, you can watch the replay and please say hi to us over on our cranberry fields and it's spelled like my town. So it's C-R-A-N-B-U-R-Y. So cranberry fields is the Instagram. And um, yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video. Phew. Wow. That was a lot of peonies, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. All right. Let me reach over without spilling one more vase and I will see you guys in the next video. How do I turn this off? Oh, here it is. Got it. Bye.